Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a 4-color Wolves deck featuring Garrick Cursed Huntsman, which is one of our big payoff cards in the deck, as a 6-mana 5-loyalty Planeswalker that with the 0 ability can make 2, 2-2 two, two black and green wolf creature tokens that say, whenever this creature dies, put a loyalty counter on each Garak you control. So there's no other way of increasing the loyalty on Garak other than the wolf tokens. But then if we do get to increase Garak's loyalty, we get to use the minus 6 ultimate, giving us an emblem that says creatures we control get plus 3 plus 3 and have trample. And otherwise we can also use a minus 3 to destroy creature and draw card. So very powerful 6 mana planeswalker. And the card that synergizes very well with Garak is Tolsimir, friend to wolves, which is a 5 mana 3-3 three, three elf scout, and when Tolsimir enters the battlefield we get to make a 3-3 three, three legendary wolf token, and whenever a wolf enters the battlefield under our control we can gain 3, and that creature finds up to one target creature we don't control, so a nice 2-for-1 uh, removal spell that can gain a bit of life against aggro decks, and the reason Tolsimir is so great with Garruk is that if we have a Tolsimir in play we can use Garruk's zero ability to make two wolf tokens, those will both end up fighting an opposing creature if our opponent controls a creature and gain us a bit of life. And those wolves dying in the fight is a very easy way for us to increase Garak's loyalty if we want to get access to the ultimate. And then looking at the rest of the deck, we've got a couple more wolves. Nightpack Ambusher, of course, a great payoff card for playing a bunch of wolf-related cards. As a 4-mana four 4-4 four with Flash that says other wolves and werewolves we control get plus 1 plus 1. And at the beginning of our end step, if we didn't cast a spell this turn, we get to make a 2-2 wolf token, which will also help us trigger Tulsimir if we have that in play. We don't have a ton of instant speed stuff to do in the opponent's turn, so we won't be making as many wolf tokens with the ambusher as, let's say, the Simic Flash deck, but we can still play a second Nightpack Ambusher in the opponent's turn to make sure we get the token, or we could adapt something like Incubation Druid, or we can make food with a goose, so we still have a few activated abilities that we can use in the opponent's turn to make sure we can still use our mana while making wolf tokens with the ambusher. And then the reason why we're four colors instead of just Abzan is so we get access to the food package with Oko making food, as well as Wicked Wolf, which is not a wolf, that when it enters the battlefield can fight up to one target creature we don't control, and we can also sacrifice a food token to put a plus one plus one counter on Wicked Wolf, it gains indestructible until end of turn, and we also have to tap it. And then looking at the rest of the deck, we've got a lot of mana creatures to make sure we can get all these expensive cards in play in time, so of course the four copies of Gilded Goose, and then we also have the full playset of Incubation Dream it, which can help us ramp and potentially fix our mana based on which lands we have in play. And the Incubation Druid synergizes nicely with one of our lands, Interplanar Beacon, which can gain life whenever we play Planeswalker, as well as fix our mana for Planeswalkers. But Interplanar Beacon plus Incubation Druid means that the Incubation Druid can tap for any color of mana, and then being able to adapt can turn it into a 3-5, and also synergizes nicely with the Nightpack Ambusher. Then we also have the full play set of Paradise Druids, which can also tap for all five colors, as well as having Hexproof, so we get at least one activation out of it before the opponent can uh, kill it with spot removal. And then also the full place of Once Upon a Time, since uh, most of the payoffs in this deck outside of uh, Oko and Garruk are creatures that we can find with it. And it does help with the consistency if we have a hand that has a bunch of expensive cards and no mana creatures, we can try and find a mana creature. And if we have a hand with a lot of mana creatures, we can maybe find one of our payoff creatures instead. And then our mana base, we've got one of each basic at least, one plains, one island, one swamp, and then two forests, alongside four copies of Fabled Passage to search those up. And then of course the three interplanar beacons, which have great synergy with our eight planeswalkers, as well as with our incubation druid. And then we have a couple dual lands as well, Breeding Pool, Temple Garden, and Overgrown Tomb. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and... We've got a pretty decent hand, especially if Once Upon a Time can find an untapped green source. So, we'll uh, try our luck. And there we go. Turn on Goose, turn to Oko. Or I could play Paradise Root first. Definitely a decision. Turn one Mountain. Does the Goose get shocked? It does. Alright, good thing we still have another turn to play. Our hands shaping up nicely, just need to make sure we have the lands to cast our spells. Bonus on Gruul, no turn to play. 
So now I can just play Oko without tapping Paradise Root, which seems better. Opponent casting a Once Upon a Time, which they probably drew for the turn, otherwise we would have seen it cast before the Shock. I think I just turned this into an Elk. I invite you to change your ways. And then just attack with the Elk. Don't want to risk losing the Paradise Druid to another Shock or a Giant. 4-4 four, four Spellbreakers, acceptable. Now I can turn it into an Elk and then kill it with Tulsimir since the plus one counter will stay. But I guess for now I can just fetch up. Swamp seems fine. I guess I can attack first with my 3-3. In case my opponent blocks, I'll happily take out a Spellbreaker. And make a food. And yeah, we're set up nicely for a Garak next turn with the Tulsimir in play, which is a dream. Another Spellbreaker. Alright, this is gonna line up perfectly. Garak's set to ultimate next turn. And we'll make another 3-3. And I could stay back if I want to play around questing beasts. But, yeah, let's hit for 6. There's a questing beast. But they can't kill my Garruk, and I would rather keep Tulsimir in play. And then I can just make two more wolves with Garruk to kill the beasts. And we're doing just fine. So... We are the apex predators. And yeah, my opponent has seen enough. Sweet, so we got to see all the powerful synergies in action. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a pretty good hand. Paradise Root for ramp, and then a nice curve of threats. Facing a tapped Watery Grave. Into a Dismal Backwater. Alright, can even play Once Upon a Time before playing Paradise Root here. I wouldn't mind another land, so I think I'll just take the Passage. I guess Island is probably what I would search up with the Passage. So we'll just take that for now. Narsets. Can attack Narset with the Paradise Druids and play Oko. Don't want to turn the Paradise Root into an Elk, because I need the mana. Or I could go for an end-of-turn Nightpack Ambusher. Which could also be reasonable. Opponent is on Grixis, so presumably a Grixis Fires of Invention deck. So yeah, if they have the Fires of Invention next turn, we could be in trouble. So I do want to prevent them finding the Fires with Narset at all costs, which probably implies I should attack Narset here. Narset's passive means I don't get to draw with Garruk, but that's the only drawback, so it's not too bad if Narset sticks around. Yeah, untap Blood Crypt into Fires of Invention, they usually have a turn 4. And yeah, now we could be in a lot of trouble. Opponent gets to start double spelling powerful planeswalkers. Lava Coil as well for the Paradise Druid. I do get to play an end of turn Nightback Ambusher at least. And then do I take out Narset or just hit my opponent? Narset could be problematic if my opponent plays a Sarkon. 
Although most Grixis decks don't necessarily play Sarkon, it's more of a just guy thing. But just in case. Oh dear. I won't forget our time together. And then I can still cast a uh, turn five Tulsimir. Although Tulsimir not the best against a control deck, not playing any creatures. Fay of Wishes. Could even be a casualties of war. Although they're still gonna need two lands in play before they can cast it. And gets a Theater of Horrors. Alright, that's a nice mana sink to have alongside Fires of Invention. Can also deal damage to Planeswalkers. So that's my opponent's turn. They did not hit our land drop, which is important to note. And I will be able to play Garakon Curve, which is nice. So it's okay to play Tulsimir. Tulsimir and Ambusher don't die to something like Ritual of Soot. And they're still pretty far off from casting Chandra or Liliana. Just make a food for now. Hit for seven. So we technically have lethal on board, so my opponent does need to deal with the creatures in play. Theater did find a Fabled Passage, so they can activate the Theater, ping me for one so they get access to a fifth land, and maybe play their Nicol Bolas, among other things. It's gonna be Ritual of Suits, leaves behind Tulsimir and Ambusher. And Nicol Bolas, which will have to kill one of my creatures. I guess it could also go after Oko. Otherwise I could turn food into an elk and hit him for 10. So food turns into an elk. Don't have to worry about instant speed removal. And then I get to play a Garrick as well. Make some more wolves. Let's broaden your existence. The wolves protect me from a potential Liliana minus four. <laughs> you cannot run now Chandra could still wipe the board here, but that's still gonna leave behind my two planeswalkers, which can hopefully finish the job. Worst case scenario is my opponent goes land, Chandra to wipe the board, and then has an Elder Spell to kill my two Planeswalkers. That's kind of the disaster scenario. Hellkite revealed with the Theater of Horrors, that could take out Garrick, but I've got a backup. So Hellkite has a 5-5. Five five. Doesn't quite cut it here. What else do they have? They can still cast one spell. Nicol Bolas. Does that keep them alive? I don't think it does. Especially with the backup Garrick in hand. I guess my opponent could use Nicol Bolas and then use Garrick's ability to make two wolves. Eh, opponent's gonna destroy Garrick instead. So, seems like pretty straightforward. Garrick kill Hellkite. Could also turn Hellkite into an Elk, which would be a 4-4, and then I can use Garrick to finish it off. Maybe that's uh, extra style points here. And my opponent sees it riding on the wall and packs it in. Alright, sweet, so we managed to beat the Grixis Fires of Invention. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. 
And yeah, the sand seems keepable enough. And uh, Oko plus Wicked Wolf is pretty strong. Opponent does have a turn one goose, so they could be off to a fast start. Do we see turn two Oko? Yep, there it is. Yeah, that's a very good start. It's not poison. They could turn my Incubation Druid into an Elk, and then it's uh, no longer taps for mana. Alright, opponent on a Teamer ramp slash uh, Planeswalker deck here. And it's going to be a turn 3 Questing Beast. So I kind of want to make foods before I play the Wicked Wolf. Turns Druid into an Elk. So I could play Oko, turn Questing Beast into an Elk, and then next turn make a food, play Wicked Wolf. That sounds reasonable. Don't need to show them the white mana yet. And do I offer the trade here? Don't think I should. Once upon a time, so opponent's gonna use this turn to kind of set up a bit. Gives us a bit of breathing room. They can make food with a goose. And Oko is gonna minus five to steal my incubation droids. Gives me a food. Fair enough. So I could take out my opponent's Oko if I am willing to sacrifice my Wicked Wolf, basically. I could play Wicked Wolf, kill Incubation Druid, turn my food into an Elk and kill their Oko. And as a result, my Oko will die as well to the Questing Beasts. So would I be happy with that outcome? Maybe not. Maybe I would rather keep my Wicked Wolf around. But I do like taking out uh, Gilded Goose here for free. Yeah, let's make this into an elk anyway. Oh dear. But I'm not gonna attack to trade for incubation druids. So they are looking to take out my Oko, which uh, I think I can let happen. They do turn the wolf into an elk. Now, should I be worried about some sort of insta speed removal to protect Oko? I don't think so. So, sending one at Oko should be sufficient. And then I'll probably keep the other one back for now. And then I can flash in the ambusher as well. You're too close minded. Could play the goose, but that kind of gives away the fact that I have a four mana play I want to make in the opponent's turn, and there's a chance that they don't expect ambusher here. Sarkon's pretty good. We begin. Behold. Now they're probably more interested in protecting their Sarkon, so we might not see them attack. Right, another ambusher could be pretty good though. So Garruk could kill the dragon, and then I could send my two three threes at Sarkon. And then my opponent gets the option of uh, trading or saving Sarkon. And then the ambusher can play defense. That sounds reasonable. Alternatively, I could have 
pass a turn to just make a wolf with ambusher and then flash in another wolf. I could guaranteed kill Sarkon by also attacking with Ambusher. So yeah, now Sarkon does get to kill Garak if it turns into a dragon. But then I'll still be left with an Ambusher. So I should be in reasonable shape. So, interesting game so far, lots of decision with all those Planeswalker activations. Hellkite's pretty good. But uh, Garak is a great top deck. Otherwise, Goose plus Wicked Wolf being pumped by the Ambusher would also have been enough to kill the Hellkite. But uh, it feels like Garak minus is a cleaner answer here. And then Stark on down. And we'll play the goose. So yeah, Wicked Wolf would have been a 5-5 if I sacked the food thanks to the ambusher. So would have also been able to fight the Hellkite successfully. Alright, another Sarkon. So now we're probably making that play. And my opponent has seen enough. Alright, sweet. So managed to beat uh, Teamer Super Friends. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. And this hand's a bit too clunky. No mana dorks, lots of 4 and 5 mana cards with only three lands, so we'll take a mulligan. And this is better. So I have the mana dorks, I have one payoff card in Tulsimir. Once Upon a Time doesn't find my Planeswalkers, so I could just bottom the Once Upon a Time here, and then hope to join two more payoff cards. Up against turn one Mountain Grim Initiate, so it could be a mono red aggro deck here. And the Goose does block the initiate at least. Maybe prevent a spectacle card from being cast. Probably should have played the overgrown tomb since we just picked up planes. Probably not gonna matter too much. Alright, they do have cavalcade. So I only take one. And Tolsimir is definitely one of our better cards in this matchup. So hopefully we get to cast it next turn. Legion Warboss, perfect target for Tulsimir. Alright, once upon a time can hopefully find some more action. Something like a night pack ambusher would be decent since we're on empty. Alright, Oko could turn Spitfire into an elk if we're scared of it. But we can first once upon a time in case I can find another wolf. Although I guess uh, I don't have the mana to cast a wolf this turn. But it uh, doesn't hurt to take a look first. Both Ambusher and Wicked Wolf. So we do have a Tulsimir in play. In case I deal with Tulsimir, I guess I want a Wicked Wolf. Plays well with uh, Oko as well. But uh, this turn I think I should turn Spitfire into an Elk. Because that card can deal a ton of damage. Especially with Cavalcade in play. Let's broaden your existence. I did have a goose which could maybe jump in front of the Spitfire, but if they go shock my goose and then attack, I'm potentially just dead. Attacks with all. 
So I'm okay trading my wolf token for Spitfire. Tolsmere could block, uh, it could die to a shock afterwards, so I might want to save Tolsmere from that fate and instead just uh, block with the goose here to prevent the damage. I guess I could also take 3 in and just block the 1-1 one, one for now, because the 1-1 one, one actually potentially deals more damage with Cavalcade than the Spitfire anyway. Yeah, this seems fine. I could get burnt out at 8 life if my opponent has a bunch of uh, spectacle cards, but the Cavalcade deck usually doesn't have a ton of burn spells, although we do see Escure the Critics, which can, I guess, also go after Tulsimir. Instead goes face, so if they have uh, two more of those, we could be dead. Not our Lightbow stage instead. Alright. I feel like we're in a pretty good spot now that we get to untap with Tulsimir in play and get to play a couple wolves. So we'll make a food first. And now an important thing to note, if you play Wicked Wolf with Tulsimir in play, you do need to go full control if you want to make sure to sag the food before the Wicked Wolf fights with Tulsimir's ability. So, resolves. There's two fights happening. We'll take out Spitfire and Spitter. So the Spitter fight will resolve first, and then the Spitfire fight. And then I want to make sure to make the Wolf indestructible. Also, if uh, Tulsimir's fight somehow ends up uh, fizzling, we don't gain a 3 life. So it's also important to make sure that the fight actually happens. And then just play the Stapped. And I guess I could consider an attack here. Paradise Druid and Tulsimir, Leaf Back, Wolf and Goose. Alternatively, I could have uh, paid 2 life to play my land untapped. So I could activate the Goose to make an extra food for the Wicked Wolf. Eh, another line of the stage. Finds a Heart Fire. Yeah, that kills me. Opponent can attack, double trigger Cavalcade, and Heart Fire is exactly for damage. Don't know if I could have prevented that from happening, gained as much life as we could. But yeah, opponent um, kind of cheese us out here decking just enough burn spells before we could take over the game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and yeah, I don't think I can keep a hand without mana dorks and this many expensive cards. This is better. Now what to put on the bottom? Kind of like all my cards, but I guess a land can probably go. And it should probably be the breeding pool just to not take infinite damage off my lands. And then the Paradise Root can still make blue mana for an early Oko. Facing Gruul Guildgate, so likely a Golos deck, which is probably the toughest matchup that our deck can face, as it usually just goes over the top. So the way to win the Golos matchup is usually to just get an early Garak Emblem, which we can achieve thanks to Tulsimir and then try and kill the opponent before they make too many zombies, but it doesn't really work out very often. So yeah, let's play Paradise Roots. At least doesn't get bounced by Teferi. And then next turn I can play an Ambusher, or I can play Druid to ramp out Garruk. It's gonna be a Guild Summit, so this is a Guildgate version of Golos. So I guess Gates Ablaze could also be a thing. In which case playing Incubation Druid is not great. So how about we just play an Ambusher instead. Right, it's gonna be a 3-3 Hydroid Crisis. Well, we're a bit uh, Garruk flooded here. Oko turning Crisis into an Elk will make it a 6-6, six, six, which is not ideal. So I guess I'll attack for 4 and then play Incubation Druid to set up one of these many Garruks. Oh, 
All right, I'm surprised that worked out. Maybe your opponent is missing a color here. Although they appear to be just straight up teamer. Gates ablaze here would kill everything but nine pack ambusher. All right, couple of grazers on defense. That's fine. Perfect. Land lets me Garrick and take out both grazers at once. And attack for Lovin. Alright, well, surprise that worked out. Opponent might have been missing some key cards there. Bit light on lands as the Grazers didn't put anything in play. But yeah, the, the Golos matchup is definitely not favorable for the deck. But we got lucky to get away with the win here, even if my opponent maybe wasn't exactly on Golos, who knows. Alright, that's gonna wrap things up for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.